Coming of Age is coming up next. I'm your host, Josh Newby. First today, we're talking about how the pandemic might or might not affect the holidays. Then, from mental concerns as social distancing remains an official recommendation through the new year, to financial considerations and some ways to have fun outside as the weather gets chilly, we've got you covered for navigating end-of-year festivities with coronavirus. Stay with us. Coming of Age starts right now. As we age, staying active in life and involved in the community can become a challenge. But with Council on Aging of West Florida's range of home-based services, you remain healthy, independent, and engaged. From Meals on Wheels and Respite Care to Senior Dining Sites and The Retreat, you'll feel empowered to regain your freedom while retaining what makes you, you. We've been in the community for nearly 50 years, advocating for elders and supporting those who care for our parents and grandparents. We were there when your father's health began declining, when your mother needed companionship during the day. And guess what? We'll be there down the road when you need those services too. Now, join with us as we talk together about the aging issues that matter to you. Months after its first appearance in the United States, COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc, not only on our physical infrastructure, but also on our mental health. A lot of us had hoped to spend the holidays with family, but recent advice from expert advises against that. This is tough for a lot of people, and it's even heartbreaking for some. It can trigger a lot of mental health concerns. Josh Waddell, a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner with Chicago Healthcare of Lakeview Center, is with us today to help us learn how to navigate the challenges of the holiday season. Man, it's an honor to be here. Excited to, to have the opportunity to sit down and talk with everybody, and um, just glad to be here. This year has presented us with a lot of challenges for our mental health. How have they affected people? I think the impact for everything that's going on on brain health is quite profound. And really, when you look at the virus in itself and the pandemic and all the things that kind of go with that, I think it really impacts brain health in two core ways. The first one is the social isolation concept. You know, we as humans are social beings. It's ingrained in us. I mean, from the beginning of time, we've always kind of enjoyed being with others, talking with others. And the, the lack of social contact has been very impactful on just our overall brain health. Um, you know, we go from being in the office every day and now we're working at home. Uh, we go from being able to maybe go to the coffee shop and or go to the dinner with friends. And now we're not doing that anymore. When we do it, it may look and feel different. And so that really impacts our ability to be social which then in itself can feel very isolating. And then that isolation can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to just a feeling of uncertainty. And I think that really leads to the second concept that we see with the brain health of this is that lack of the unknown or the unknown. So we just aren't sure what's going to happen. There's a lot of fear in that for people. You know, we as humans, mentally, we, we like to know what's coming. Uh, we like to be able to plan, and most of us want to know where, where this is going to end, what it's going to look like to end. And without that, that creates a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. And we've seen it really impact not only people who may already have issues with their brain health, but people who have no issues with their brain health. And so I think that's really been a big um, impact in, across the board is you see certain people that may be able to get treatment or get the treatment that they need and then other people who are feeling the, like they've never felt in their life. Uh, so definitely the challenges um, for the brain is, is quite profound. So why are changes to our holiday traditions so upsetting? I think that's such a great question. You know, holiday traditions in itself hold so much meaning. I, I think it does, doesn't matter where you're at in this country, that everybody has a holiday tradition in some form or fashion. And so what that, why that's so important is traditions create meaning. And I think we as humans are meaning making machines. Everything we do creates meaning. And through that meaning, we identify what's important, what to give our energy to. For some people, it's family. For some people, it's work. For some people, it's church. But either way, holiday traditions kind of find themselves in it, whether it's the company uh, Christmas party, whether it's spending time with family, whether it's going to church gatherings or social gatherings. And so when these things are impacted, whether we don't have them or they're changed in some way, it's almost as if it's an attack on our core value and our core self. And that is very troubling to us. It's very troubling to our brain. And so it can almost feel like the things that we find most important, like we talked about earlier, um, 
are gone now or they're, or they're being changed and we have no control in it. And so I think that really holds a big impact when we kind of think about the virus and, and traditions and holidays and that type of thing. Also think that we, as, we all as humans want to generate more memories and traditions allow us to do that. Doing the same thing, eating the same food, going to the same places, you know, the smell of Christmas cookies or the, you know, going to your grandmother's house, whatever that looks like, man, it's such a, a meaning making machine that we have are allows us to create more memories with each other. And I think we really always strive to do that in the holidays. There's been a lot of talk about the trade-off between physical well-being and mental health and where that sort of tipping point is. Talk about that trade-off and what we can do to mitigate some of the negative effects of that. What a great question. I think within that lies the greatest challenge we have faced in the pandemic. You know, the social distancing concept in itself holds great importance. I mean, its ability to decrease the spread of the virus, whether it be short term and then also long term, there is a major impact of that. However, there are side effects with that. And as I stated earlier, you know, we're all social beings. We all strive to connect with other people. The absence of that leads to us feeling very isolated, lonely, maybe hopeless and helpless. And that leads to that depression and anxiety and fear and all the things it can kind of lead to. Um, I think another major impact of it is just everyone's daily routine has changed. For some people, it may a little be a little bit more normal than it was, like let's say, in June, but it's still quite different. And so when we have that impact, it's going to have long-term effects on our brain. You know, so when you talk about you're not able to go up and get to go to work every day, you're kind of doing it from home. What does that look like? You're not going out and about. What does that look like? So the uneasiness and the lack of structure in our life due to the restrictions have definitely impacted our um, mental well-being in an attempt to kind of decrease this spread. What are some tips, maybe some guidelines for navigating the holidays during this pandemic in a way that we can still enjoy friends and family? You know, I think the, the most important thing is to generate some form of normalcy. Um, even though there are these restrictions and these things that exist, creating the, the normal things that you normally would do in some form or fashion, I think the first thing you need to do is having conversations with your family about what their traditions will look like. What can you do? What can you not do? If it's something to where maybe not everybody's able to be there, are you going to be able to use like technology platforms like Zoom or FaceTime or something like that to, so that everyone can be together? There are so many different technology apps right now where you can play games with people who no matter where they are in the world, you're able to play like some type of trivia game or something like that and be able to interact with everybody. Um, I think if you're able to everyone be together, creating that distance, you know, planning ahead, what's that going to look like? There's nothing worse than having this event, bringing people over and it just kind of be in chaos, you know, and people becoming uncomfortable and not liking the situation that they have. So I think that having a good plan of what it'll look like there in the home. And then the main thing is don't allow these changes to alter the whole season in itself. Um, you know, the whole concept is togetherness uh, within these holidays. And I think making sure that you stay present, you're together, you be with each other, even if it's through some weird technology app that you may have only used twice, it can be very helpful. I was reading um, a great article by a gerontologist talking about how people have these preconceived notions that people over 55 and 60 don't like these apps and they won't use them. However, many people use them and do quite well with them. It's just, you know, family members creating that opportunity to teach them, help them learn and give them that opportunity. You know, at first the pandemic uh, seemed like it would only last a couple of months. And now, of course, we're talking about things into next year. What are some coping mechanisms for the long term stressors that this has created? Absolutely. You know, I think that, you know, there's still so much uncertainty with the virus and it's always evolving. I think the most important thing is that what we're doing for our brain health within this is something that we need to be doing no matter what happens, whether the virus is still around six months from now or not, we need to be working on our brain. Things like, you know, maintaining your daily routine, getting up at a good time, going to bed at a good time, being some type of physically active, whether it's, you know, walking, running, taking your dog for a walk, maybe going, you know, doing some exercises at home, your nutrition, what are you consuming? So there is a vast amount of information out there about the right foods to eat when it comes to uh, depression and anxiety and that type of thing. And then your self-care. You know, I tell people a lot of time, every day, 
you need to be doing at least one thing for yourself to fuel your brain gas tank. You know, whether that's you're meditating, you're reading, you're exercising, you're doing it every single day. And then at least once a week, you have one big thing. So whether that's going on for a hike, whether that's maybe going out to the beach, maybe watching a movie at home, whatever that looks like, you're doing it every week. And so you're fueling yourself to be able to take these almost emotional beatings that we're taking right now with all the uncertainty that we have. And then lastly, just to stay present, you know, be present in the moment, you know, turn off the social media, turn off the news, turn off those things and just kind of be with the people that are around you. Uh, because ultimately, if we've learned anything in this whole pandemic, that in itself is the most important thing is uh, being with one another. All right, Josh. Well, I appreciate it so much. Very timely information. Thank you for coming on today. You know, if anybody's hurting, you know, reaching out, you know, whether it be like wherever you're at, you know, whether it be the Lakeview sure. Center or Chautauqua there in the Funiac, whatever that looks like, people being able to reach out for whether it be therapy, medicine, case management, all those things. You know, that's really something we provide that's there and they can use it. Next, some saving tips for the holidays during this time of economic uncertainty. Stay with us. Why do people love ACTS Retirement Life Communities? There are more reasons than just the active lifestyle. Like ACTS Life Care, a plan that protects your nest egg with predictable monthly fees, even if your health care needs increase. So you can enjoy a carefree today and a worry-free tomorrow. Plan a visit and see why our satisfaction rating with current residents stands at 98%. ACTS Retirement Life Communities, where loving kindness lives. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! The Christmas season can put many families under financial strain, even under the best circumstances. But 2020 has been different, and so must your holiday spending habits. Here to tell us how to navigate the finances and budgeting of this retail season is Gulf Winds Credit Union. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Glad to be here. What tips do you have for seniors wanting to budget for the holidays? I mean, 2020 is a whole different animal. I imagine the <laughs> advice is different. It's a bit different, but it all comes down to budgeting. Okay. As you said, you want to create that budget. So the first step is really knowing what is that total amount of that spend that you want to do for this year. Maybe a little bit different in 2020, you may have less to spend, but determining that total amount is super important. Once you know what you can spend and be realistic about that amount, if you need to make some adjustments this year, do so. But then once you determine that total amount, the first thing you want to do is create some list. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to be buying for? Make those lists. How much do you want to spend on each? And then what are those non-gift essentials that you're going to buy? So if you're traveling, you got to budget it. Right. If you're going to have a lot of people over for a meal, you need to budget that as mm -hmm. well. If you're going to buy a tree or extra Christmas decorations, you got to budget. So all of those go into that budget item. And then once you have all of that information, you can't just throw it to the side and forget about it. You've got to look at those items that you spend each day, compare it to your budget, and make adjustments as needed. Maybe you got a sale on a gift for your grandkid or mm -hmm. your child or your best friend or whomever. That's great. Make the adjustments as needed. And because life happens, you may need to pull back a little bit in areas or add more in some other areas. But most important, don't go over that total amount that you're going to that you guaranteed yourself not to spend more. Yeah. Than. That's great advice. And I want to I want to just highlight two of the things you said there. Um, 
all the ancillary expenses, mm -hmm. I always forget about that. Things are always more expensive Absolutely. than you think they're gonna be, right? Um, and then uh, certainly um, remembering to adjust your budget. Mm -hmm. If something is on sale, if something is a little more expensive, um, I never do that either. So great advice for me as, as well as seniors, <laughs> I appreciate that. Do you have any special accounts or lines of credit uh, specific to the holiday season this year? Sure, we actually have a holiday savings account. Okay. It's a great account, it's free free to open, free to maintain. Typically, it really works just like a regular savings account, except for on November 1st, it matures, okay. which means all the money goes straight into your savings account just in time for spending for Christmas sure. season. Now, it might be a little too late to open that right, account for right. this season, but it's a great time to begin opening it for next season. Mm. And the same as budgeting. Determine the amount that you want to spend, how much will you take to save each month to put into that account, you can make those regular deposits. You can even have a set of automatic transfers. So it's almost a set it and forget it. Okay. And then just let it save. Then next Christmas rolls around and it's all there for you to spend. Can those accounts be set up online? Absolutely, okay. with ease. You just go to your website and go, and go to gogolflins.com. Absolutely. How do you suggest seniors resist going into too much debt? You, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, you make this budget, don't mm -hmm. just throw it away, keep it. Um, but I can imagine, especially with grandparents, um, they wanna make the world brighter for their grandkids, <laughs> and it is so tempting to just go into too much debt. You're absolutely right. First is really setting that budget. Yeah. Can't say it enough, right. set the budget. The holiday fund, also really helpful to set up ahead of time to save throughout the year. But remember, the kids wanna spend time with you. Right. Not with other, you know, the toy that's gonna break in three months. Sure you're gonna be more important than that. So you don't have to overspend to make kids happy. That's a good, that's a good point. And I have an 18 month old, so yeah. I'm gonna tell my wife that. Exactly, you he's gonna play to... with the bag more exactly. than the toy that you get him. So Come just on. get some bags. Come on, Caitlin, okay. <laughs> uh, that's my wife. So if seniors can't afford an extravagant holiday, uh, maybe they can't really afford much of a holiday mm -hmm. at all, what advice do you have for them to still make this season special? So there are a few things they can do to show their generosity without spending a lot of money. So homemade gifts mm. are great. Um, if you have a famous pie recipe or sure. that great cookie recipe, making batches of those and throwing them in some tins you get from the dollar store, those are all really great things to do. And don't get tempted to go into a lot of those extra gift exchanges. $5 here, $10 there may not seem like a much, a lot, but mm. when you add it up, it's gonna really break your budget. Another idea is instead of buying gifts for everybody in your family, have everybody put their name in a hat, choose one, and sure. then you focus on that one person. And that's gonna save some money as well. Yeah, absolutely. It might be better to make one person's holiday really worthwhile than exactly. to, yeah, exactly, try to spread it out too much. I, I know, uh, for example, when you buy a house, they mm -hmm. recommend that your mortgage payments are under a certain percentage sure. of your income. Is there something similar with holiday spending or with savings in general? Is there a certain percentage they recommend you don't go over? So a good rule of thumb is about one and a half percent of your annual gross income. Okay. Now you need to look at that once again, one and a half percent may be too much for certain mm. people. So you really need to know what are your personal finances? What do they look like and what can you afford to spend? Be realistic and stick with that. And again, remember the holiday season isn't about spending a lot of money. Right. It's about spending time with friends and with family and making memories, not making a lot of debt. That's a good point because I think people people get so wrapped up in, mm -hmm. in the consumerism, right? Exactly. And they, they see all the ads, they wanna make their family happy, which is a worthwhile goal, of course, um, that they forget that it's mm -hmm. the family themselves that exactly. makes them happy, right? Um, I wanted to ask you also, I know Gulf Winds does a lot in the community, mm -hmm. a lot for Council on Aging, we appreciate it. Um, talk about some of the good that Gulf Winds uh, does in the community, does for its members, and does especially for nonprofits during this difficult time. Sure. Well. Gulf Winds is a nonprofit organization, right. so that's great that we're able to do it. So we've done a lot for Council on Aging. We do a lot for MANA mm -hmm. or through MANA and here in Northwest Florida. But we also have branches in, in Tallahassee and sure. in Alabama. So we do different things with Second Harvest and the food banks in that area. We like to be able to give funds at least once a year, a good Absolutely. chunk of that. But then volunteerism is really big with our employees and being able to help out and serve in those manners as well, not just giving cash. Recently with the, the fun with the barges, yes. we were able to help out with uh, barge ween over in uh, Gulf yes, So that was right. really nice to be able to help that community over there that's really struggling a bit without people 
being able to get over the bridge Definitely. easily. You know, you mentioned um, that uh, Gulf Winds employees volunteer, mm -hmm. uh, feel very strongly in volunteerism, and that made me think that a group volunteer effort during the holidays is also a Absolutely. great way to, to give back to the community mm -hmm. uh, instead of just giving to one another. Yeah, getting your whole family together and going and volunteering somewhere else. It's a nice way to get, once again, make those memories, Absolutely. but then give back. Very timely advice, Ashley. Thank you for Thank all you. you do. Thank you for all Gulf Winds does. I appreciate you coming on today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Next, we talk with Visit Pensacola about the many great holiday options available to seniors in our area. Stay tuned. Since 1989, TLC Caregivers has been providing the special help people need to stay independent in their own homes. TLC is an employer of choice in the home care market. Our employees are screened with level two background screens, drug-free and have caregiving experience. If you have time, enjoy people and are interested in joining us, go to tlccaregivers.com to learn more about becoming a TLC caregiver or visit us in Cordova Square. When cancer tries to take you away from the things that matter most, Baptist Cancer Institute offers caring physicians and the most innovative treatment options. With convenient locations and a wide array of support programs and services, we're here to help you during the most difficult of times. As a member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, we're bringing even more innovative cancer care to our community right here at home. When you need cancer care, we'll be there. Something we always look forward to is the holiday season in Northwest Florida. The temperature finally dips and there are so many activities to enjoy downtown, at the beach, and other places. But with a pandemic and a damaged bridge, you may be wondering what the possibilities are this year. Lindsay Steck with Visit Pensacola joins us now to give us the details. Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me today, Josh. What does the holiday season look like in Pensacola this year, especially with those challenges that I mentioned? Sure, so the holidays still are happening. Uh, of course, everything is within CDC guidelines and there are a lot of virtual components as well for those that don't feel comfortable getting out yet, which is a great option. Uh, Winterfest is still happening. The first city lighting ceremony is still happening and there's a virtual component there as well. There's some great events on the beach like the lighted boat parade. Um, and it's, it's really a little different too to make sure that they are allowing for those safe practices. So Lindsay, what activities do you recommend specifically for seniors during the holidays in the pandemic? So fall in Pensacola is really the locals time of year. The temperatures are mild, the sunsets are more gorgeous than ever because they're over the Gulf, and it's really just the perfect time to go outside. So the beaches are always a fan favorite of mine, especially because you can go birding, shelling, really light walks that are really great for seniors, but also too, there's so many other things as far as going downtown to the parks and even over in Perdido Key and Big Lagoon State Park. There's a, there's a huge array of options uh, completely. You mentioned the beach. We got to talk about the beach and that bridge. Um, I know Visit Pensacola has been doing a lot of promotion around the beach. The beach is still accessible. It just looks a little different now. Talk to us about the beach. Absolutely. So there's a great tool called threemilebridge.com that gives real-time traffic updates and really you can check any time of day how long it will take you to get there. But the beach is still very accessible. Another great option is while a lot of people think of Pensacola Beach, Perdido Key is just a short 30 to 35 minute drive from downtown Pensacola. So if you're looking for a different option with that same white sand and just beautiful water and really there's, you know, the national park out there as well, it really is accessible on all fronts to get to. That's a good point about Perdido Key. Um, I always forget about it, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm glad it's there, and you're right. You don't have to go that circuitous route to get there. Talk about shopping in Pensacola. Uh, holiday shopping, always fun. I'm sure it looks a little bit different this year with mask, mask mandates, social distancing, and such. Where do we stand right now uh, with guidelines around shopping in Pensacola? Yes, yeah, so if you're within the city, there is still the mask ordinance and a lot of businesses are asking that you do follow that. But a lot of businesses are also offering alternative shopping 
which is you're looking at online shopping, you know, curbside pickup and drop off and things like that. But really the stores are open they want to see you. And also too, don't forget, I know you're thinking about your beach businesses, but mm -hmm. don't forget about those Pensacola beach businesses from the That's boardwalk right. to everything in between. Now is the time to really go out of your way to support them to get those local items and make the effort, especially with the bridge being out. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. A lot of them are struggling, uh, but they, they offer worthwhile objects uh, for, your, for your friends and family, certainly. Talk about the importance of supporting small businesses right now. They've been struggling all of 2020 with the pandemic. The bridge isn't helping matters. Uh, a lot of people might be tempted, you know, just go online to Amazon, shop that way. Talk about the importance of shopping small. Absolutely, you have to shop small. These people working here is their livelihood and these are their businesses that they're having to support. You know, my family, we always, a great tradition we do is we do a holiday ornament exchange. And the one rule we have is it has to come from a local shop. You know, now is the time to go out to those weekend markets that you're seeing or where they're bringing those businesses in, but really even to, you know, plan an afternoon. It's, you know, usually maybe 10 minutes added to your bridge commute if you're going, I say bridge, as you're going around, you right. know, to Pensacola Beach and make the effort to go to those stores and also enjoy a really nice afternoon outing where you can see the beach and, you know, go to those restaurants that you love so much and support those too. Make a day of it. Make a safe day of make it. Make a safe day of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, if people want to enjoy downtown Pensacola during the holidays, um, it's certainly magical with the lights up and mm -hmm. like you said, the, the weather is a little cooler. Uh, where can they go to find information on, for example, when is Winterfest or when is, when is the light parade? Where can they find information on that? So visit Pensacola.com has a wonderful community calendar where anyone, any business can submit to it. We also have special tabs that if you're looking for just holiday events or even Thanksgiving events or meal specials, those are a really good option. Also, for those of you that are apt to smartphones, we do have a great Visit Pensacola app called Experience Pensacola. And that's everything from you can discover itineraries, so maybe exploring you know, outdoor activities or things that you've never thought of, you know, vacation in your destination. It really is a good opportunity. But there as well, there are those events that you can look for. But we have a, a great deals page that I really encourage people, not just during the holidays to look through, yeah. but our partners put information on them year round. So specials, deals, yeah. events, restaurants to eat at. There's everything on both our website and the Visit Pensacola app. That's a great resource. Lindsay, thank you uh, so much for everything you do, everything Visit Pensacola does for our region. Thank you so much, Josh. And until next time, enjoy life. You've earned it.